Hello, DCT family. Hope you're doing great. Well, in this video, we are talking about pharmacokinetics and specifically about pharmacokinetic modeling and how drug behavior and journey in the body can be described. We know that this discipline involves ADMI processes, absorption, distribution, metabolism, and elimination, which affect drug concentrations in different body tissues. And to simplify the complexity of the drug handling through the different pharmacokinetic processes, mathematical principles can be used to describe the different processes. Yet, to apply these principles, a model of the body should be chosen. A basic type of model used in pharmacokinetics is the compartmental model. Compartmental models are classified by the number of compartments required to describe the drug's behavior in the body. There are one compartment, two compartment, three compartment models, and so on. And to get this right, we need to know what does a compartment mean. Well, compartments group similar tissues and organs with similar drug distribution patterns. For instance, some drugs might get distributed differently into the fat tissue compared to the kidney. So these tissues might be classified into different compartments. Generally, organs with good blood circulation like the heart, liver and kidneys tend to have similar drug distribution and they can be thought of as one group. This group of organs with the blood or plasma usually is referred to as the central compartment or the highly perfused compartment. On the other hand, the less well perfused areas like fat tissue, muscle tissue and so on make up the another group and referred to as the peripheral compartment. All right, now we know the compartment concept. Let's couple it with the number of compartments to understand the whole modeling concept. So, the simplest compartmental model is the one compartment model. And this one assumes an instant distribution of the drug throughout the body. In the two compartment model though, drug distribution occurs rapidly in the bloodstream and highly perfused organs before moving to other body tissues. So we would have a central compartment and a peripheral one in the way that was illustrated earlier. Having three compartments mean that we have a central compartment and two peripheral ones and we know why. Compartments are usually represented by a closed square or a rectangular and the movement of drug in and out the compartment is described by errors. In the one compartment model, we have the drug getting into the body either directly into the bloodstream or absorbed from its site of application. Then it distributes instantly into all body organs. After that, it gets cleared out or eliminated broadly either by renal excretion or metabolism. In the two compartment model, the drug after administration distributes into two compartments, a central one into which the drug rapidly distributes and a peripheral one containing the less perfused organs into which the drug does not distribute instantly. Drug moves back and forth between these compartments to maintain equilibrium. However, we have to know that here, elimination only occurs from the central compartment. Remember that model's power resides in their ability to predict the drug concentration accurately. And usually, the simpler compartmental model is selected. If one compartment model is sufficient to describe the drug behavior, then there is no need to go for a two-compartment model for the drug. And we will detail the math of the different models in the upcoming videos in the PK series, so stay tuned. But first, if you like this video, put a comment down below so it reaches more people that would benefit from it. Thank you so much and till next time, as always, stay fabulous wherever you are.